Howdy developers, today I want to talk about creating three more things that you sometimes see in databases. Now, these are a little bit more advanced and they're very helpful for what we're going to do, however. So the three things we're going to talk about is triggers, functions, and store procedures. Now, the problem is that they all are handled very differently in different databases, depending upon what database you're using. Because not only does it require SQL commands, but they also might have other programmatic commands that are kind of behind the scenes that you're going to implement and use for them. So why are they similar and why are they different? Well, they're similar because all your major databases are going to support these three things. And they're important because they do different things that are very important, especially if we need to do and wrap up multiple statements into a single statement. So a store procedure is great for that. It's what we used to use all the time for it. What makes store procedures even more powerful is the fact that they can receive information. You can pass information to it just like you would with a function in your favorite programming language, like Python or Java or something like that. The difference is with a store procedure, you can do inserts and updates. And because you can do multiple commands inside of one call, this has a lot of power. We often use this when we do a transaction that we might want to roll back to the beginning. We're going to learn more about transactions in the future, so be looking out for that. But just for right now, understand that a store procedure is typically we're going to get that. What's even better is that a store procedure is going to allow you to return data as well. In fact, you can return nothing, a single piece of data, a couple of pieces of data, or even something like a whole row set. So store procedures are very, very powerful from that perspective. Because you can do inserts and updates, a lot of times you can't necessarily put that into another SQL statement as part of like an inner join. But that's where a function comes into play. Functions are similar, but they're also different in the fact that you can only do select statements inside of a function. So that helps you in a lot of ways because those select statements are going to be returning data. It makes it easier to be able to use as part of a join for another more complicated SQL statement. Once again, if you're going, wait, what is a join? Don't worry. We're going to talk about that also in the future. So why are we talking about them now? If we have to talk about stuff that's also in the future? Well, all these are created using the create command. And I'm going to show you real quick inside of Heidi SQL how you go about that. So over here in my order example, I can right click here, choose create new, and notice I can choose my store procedure or a stored function. When I choose it, you know, it's, it comes up. This is for a store procedure. It's going to ask me what's the name. Who's the definer? Because I can set up to run as other people. Comments if necessary. I can choose if I'm going to return a result or not. Do I contain SQL, no SQL, etc., as well as SQL security. So whose security model is running this? Is it the person who created it or the person who called it? This is very important when we define things like security and different users and different types of permissions to different users. Then you'll notice I have inside my body a begin and an end. These are also very standard. And then whatever I want to run needs to go in between those two commands. Set up a function is pretty similar. Choose stored function and notice that it's very similar. Okay. Now triggers a little bit different. I want to show you how real quick. I'm going to choose create new and trigger, but you're going to notice it's a little bit different. So I define a name and then I have to define a table. And what happens is triggers occur when we're going to do something to a table. So this is a way of protecting ourselves. We can check to make sure, hey, does this really work? Does this data exist, etc. So I choose my table I want to create my trigger on. And then I can choose, is it going to be before or after? And then what type of update? 
Is it an insert, an update, or a delete? So for example, if I'm going to delete data, I might want to make sure that no one else is referencing it first. And so I can actually go out there, do a check, and then if a certain condition is met or not met, I can stop the delete from occurring to protect the integrity of my data. Likewise, I could go in and if I'm going to do an insert, I can make sure that maybe some other piece of data is there along with me that needs to be there. So this is a very interesting way of protecting ourselves and preventing errors from occurring throughout the database because of missing data that might not be there. So it's a little bit different than the store procedure where we can have multiple updates or inserts inside of the same command. This is checking and say, hey, I see an update that's about to occur. I see an insert that's about to occur. Let me go do this. One thing that we used to use this for in a personal example was on insert. We would do it afterwards. And then what we do is we would send out an email message whenever a new case got submitted. So we were looking for when a new case was submitted in our help desk system. And it would go through and say, oh, a case has been submitted. Let's now send this to the help desk team, let them know. And we had a basic email message that can be filled out and all sent through this. That was done using Transact SQL and SQL Server. There's a bunch of information built into it that let us do that. MySQL doesn't have those same commands. That's why we're not showing the exact commands and how you do it, because it will vary very much depending upon what database you're going to use. But there's other things you can do as well. Whether you're looking for pricing updates, you want to let other people know, or you're doing some sort of deletion check or insertion information triggers is where that's going to occur. Hopefully you found this helpful. If so, you want to check out our next video coming up, which is going to be on how we get rid of data, including dropping a whole table from our database. That's up next in the series.